I'm Sean Elliott, a urologic reconstructive surgeon specializing in surgeries to rebuild the bladder in people with neurologic problems like spinal cord injury. I have performed hundreds of bladder augmentation surgeries with excellent results. A bladder augmentation enlarges the size of the bladder and lowers the pressure in the bladder. If you picture your bladder being a one-story house with a small roof, bladder augmentation adds a two-story roof onto that house significantly increasing the size. This video is a cartoon description of the steps involved in bladder augmentation. It is intended for patients and their caregivers. Let's start with why someone would need a bladder augment. When a healthy bladder fills with urine and gets full, the bladder stretches to hold more urine at low pressure. A neurogenic bladder is one damaged by a neurologic condition like spina bifida, spinal cord injury, or cerebral palsy. Damaged nerve input makes the bladder muscle thicken, and a thick-walled bladder cannot expand to hold more urine when it gets full. Instead, the bladder pressure goes up. The high pressure leads to either urine leakage or to back pressure on the kidneys, which can cause bad kidney infections or even kidney failure. When these problems do not improve with bladder-relaxing pills such as oxybutyn, tolteridine or mirabegron, or with injections of bladder Botox, then bladder augmentation surgery is usually needed. Now let's go through the steps of how to do a bladder augmentation. First, get a piece of small intestine to use for the augment and set it aside. Here the small intestine is shown in light brown and the large intestine, which is otherwise known as the colon, is shown in dark brown. Stool normally flows from the small intestine to the large intestine. We cut out an approximately 12 inch piece of small intestine and wash it out so it is clean and we set it aside. Next, we have to reconnect the small intestine so that the food can move through in a normal way. To do this, we bring the two cut edges of small intestine next to each other and then sew them together. Next, we unzip the section of small intestine we previously set aside. Unzipping this turns a tube into a flat rectangle that we can use for the augment. Here we see the brown tubular intestine being opened up to reveal the rectangular pink inner surface. So, in order to make an effective augment, we need to fold the rectangular piece of intestine into an S shape. Then, we sew the edges of that S to create a square patch of intestine to serve as our augment. Next, we have to make the bladder ready to receive the augment. We cut the bladder down the middle and open it up wide to create some space in which to place the augment. This is similar to the way that a clamshell is opened up. Here, we see the front and then the back wall of the bladder being opened up and then the edges being folded out like a clamshell. Finally, we have to add the bladder augment onto the bladder. Again, this is like adding a much larger roof onto a small house. We sew this square patch of small intestine to the bladder to create our augment. This is first done on the back wall and then on the front wall. When this is complete, we have a bladder that can hold about six hours of urine and stored at very low pressures, fixing the incontinence problems, bladder spasm problems, and kidney problems that are typical of neurogenic bladder. If it's time for you to consider a bladder augment, then please reach out to me through my website, seanelliottmd.com.